This is Professor Rudy, and this video is on how to solve first order ordinary differential equations using MATLAB. Uh, so, for this first part, I'm just going to do a simple example of a uh, first order ODE, which is um, that just means that there is one time derivative. Um, so, this is cast in a dynamics problem, which is given as follows. We have the velocity of a particle traveling along a straight line is given by uh, V equals 3t squared minus 6t feet per second, where t is in seconds. We're given an initial condition that when the time is zero, the position is four feet, and we want to know what the position is when t equals four seconds. Um, so, that's the dynamics problem taken from a textbook. but what we want to do in this case is rather than solve this by hand, we're going to use numerical integration in MATLAB uh, to integrate this equation over time and give us our result for uh, basically position as a function of time. And then we can use that to solve the original problem at t equals 4 seconds, but we're also getting more information. So just to uh, rewrite this in a uh, form that looks more like a differential equation is we know that velocity is the change in position with respect to time. So uh, rewriting this as ds dt equals uh, this expression here. And then defining our initial condition that when s is, uh, when t is 0, s is 4 feet. Um, and we're going to do this uh, numerical solving in MATLAB using the ODE45 function. Uh, which is it uses a numerical integration technique called Runge Kutta, um, which is uh, just a numerical integration approach that leads to some some pretty accurate results. Um, so this is our problem. Um, going to MATLAB, I already have a script that is going to do this, and I'm just going to walk through it. Uh, so we start off by clearing our workspace, and then I have the problem definition defined. Right in here, it's just the same problem that we, we were just looking at. Um, so now I'm just going to start defining some things in code. So I have the initial position of S0 is 4 feet. So I want to define that because that's going to be important. Then this next part, we need to define that differential equation as a function. Uh, there's two different ways to do this. One way would be to create a function file and define a user-defined function that takes arguments of time as well as uh, s or whatever the differential equation variable is. So we have ds dt. So we need arguments of t and s. And so we could do this in a function file, but I also wanted to show you another way to do this. And this is called an anonymous function. And this is a way to define a function directly in your script. So we don't need a separate file for this. And this is uh, pretty useful when you have relatively simple functions. There's also a few other applications where these can be useful. Uh, but so in this case, to define our ODE, what we need to do is we give the function a name. So um, I like to use dsdt here just to really remind us exactly what this equation is going to give us. So this is defining that, that velocity equation. We need to use this at symbol and then parentheses. And inside of there is where we're going to list the inputs to the function. So we want this function to take inputs uh, of time and position. Um, and so we just define them in this way. It's always this format. It's the at symbol, parentheses, and then whatever your input variables are. After that, we just have a space, and then we define our function. So in this case, we have 3t squared minus 6t. So now this is a function that we could use. Um, if we gave it a time and a position, we can get a result. So we can give this arguments like ds dt of 2 comma 5, and it will give us a, an answer. But that's not how we're going to use it. We want to use it to solve the differential equation, not just to evaluate uh, what its derivative is equal to. So we need one more piece of information before we can call our solver, and that is the time span or the time range that we want to evaluate this ODE over. Because this is a numerical technique, it's only going to calculate things 
for a certain range. It's not just going to get one um, overall analytical solution that's valid for all time. It's just going to do this for whatever times you tell it to. Um, so in general, you want to keep this um, as low as you can in order to get the part that you really care about. Um, so if I don't care what goes on after five seconds, um, I'll just go from, from zero to five. Because we know we wanted to know what was happening at four seconds, and so maybe I wanted to go a little bit past that and go to five. So what this is, is this is a vector with two arguments. It's just starting time and ending time. And then the solver will fill in the values in between those. Then we just need to call our ODE45 function. And we do this by having output arguments of time and in this case our position so t comma s uh, in square brackets because that is a vector of, of two outputs equals ODE45 that's the name of this built-in MATLAB uh, ODE solving function then we can give it our the name or the variable here for our anonymous function so what we defined up here this DSDT that's what we want to put in there um, by the way, you could also just have th this code written directly into your function call, but using variables tends to be a nice way to do this. The time span, so that 0 to 5, which again, we could have defined this, just basically copied that right in here, but variables are also a nice way to do this. And then the initial position here. So this is our uh, initial state for this ODE. And then that's it. If we run this code, if we call this, we will get a solution to this equation. And then the last thing we'll want to do here is we'll want to plot this. So um, I just plot these two output variables, T and S, put some labels on there, give it a grid, um, and that'll give us a plot. And then just before we run this, I want to show you one last piece. If we wanted to solve that problem, so the problem asked us, what is the position when T equals 4 seconds? What we're getting out of our ODE45 is we're getting vectors of data. We've got a, a pairing of time and position data. But we don't necessarily have a value at exactly time equals 4 seconds. Um, so if you remember from our previous um, discussions, you can use interpolation to figure out a specific value. Uh, so the interp1 statement, all we need to do is give it the, the data set, so the time and position data from that solver, and then just whatever time value here we want to evaluate. So if you remember, this is you have a pairing of data. This is what you want to look up from this variable. And then you're going to get out something from this second variable here. So this will give us the position when t equals 4 seconds. Um, and then I'm just, rather than just outputting this onto the screen, I'm going to print this in a nice format, be very clear about what this means, format it to three decimal places. Um, and then that's it. So let's go ahead and run this. And here's what we get. So we have a plot now. So this is the data that came from the ODE45 function solver. And so this is what that response looks like of the position versus time. We can see in here, uh, we could try to look from the figure to try to pick off that four value. Um, and in this case, we did happen to have an exact value on there for time equals 4. But if we didn't have that and we didn't want to manually look at the figure here, we could use that interpolation technique, which is telling us right here that um, s equals 20 at t equals 4 seconds. Um, and so that's, that's it for uh, solving a simple first order ODE uh, using the ODE45 solver. Um, in a future video, I will go through how to do this for higher order ODEs. Thank you.